What's up, it's Ethan. In this video, we're going to talk shadowing. Shadowing is really important for genetic counseling, especially because they want you to know when you're going into this that you truly want to commit to it and you it's definitely the path you want to take. That's because the programs tend to range from anywhere from like five to 15 students. So they're extremely small genetic counseling grad programs. And so if you went into this thinking you wanted to do it and you get into grad school and realize you don't want to do it, then you would have taken away a spot from someone who now has to wait a whole year to apply to another round of grad school potentially, just because you didn't get enough exposure to the career before you applied to actually know that's something you wanted to do. So I've actually been able to get one solid shadowing experience in so far, and it's not too hard to, to find genetic counselors in your area and genetic counselors that are willing to you know, be shadowed or have you interview them or ask them some questions or talk to them. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty simple and it's just about proactivity and reaching out on your part. So first step is just going to be going to the National Society of Genetic Counselors. Go to that page. You're going to go to Careers Student Corner. All right, once you're here, find a genetic counselor. And then all right, this is going to be random. So just do, all right, let's say California. And if you just search that, it's going to be very broad, but you're going to get this list of people here. What you're looking for is it's going to say the company they're working at, their contact information. And then this is the important part. So what you want to do is find descriptions that say open to student contact. So. For instance, these two here would not fall into that category, but if you look here, student contact welcome. So what you would do is just go grab the email and you know send a nice professional email basically saying, hi, I've seen that from the National Society of Genetic Counselors that you're open to student contact. And I'm wondering if there's a way we could set up a meeting or set up a shadowing opportunity. What happened when I did this is there's a ton of hospitals right around the University of Pittsburgh, the UPMC hospitals. So a lot of the genetic counselors were working in those hospitals. So there was a ton of results and a ton of people open to student contact because they're right next to a university. So just reach out and ask if it's okay, if you would have a meeting or what days might work best for them, what kind of, how the process goes. It's gonna definitely vary from location to location and on a person by person basis. But I know what happened with me is that I received an email back. I reached out to probably five, different genetic counselors maybe in my area. And I received an email kickback that was just a generic email from the head of the department for shadowing and student opportunities. And then she told me exactly how the process would go, that there are certain days that are available. There's like an email list where when there are shadowing opportunities that present themselves on like certain specific days, they would, you get on an email list and then they would send those days out to you. So you could kind of sign up for an opportunity and get your name in that way. So I believe the counselor I actually got the shadow just reached out personally to me and we on our own terms just set up a, an appointment basically so what that's going to look like is they have a patient come in and they would just discuss the specific issue that the patient has and um, what routes are available for them what uh, they might have to do for treatment they also go through and they ask a lot of questions about different family history and family medical conditions so that you can kind of and then they fill in a pedigree based on that information. So she had a specific pedigree that she already had kind of filled out to a certain extent, but then she was asking more and more questions to fill in more details and more eliminate different possibilities on there. So that's what I experienced so far. Going back to school, I'm gonna have more opportunity with COVID clearing up a little bit. And um, even if it has to be virtual, I'm sure a lot of places are gonna be doing that right now, but basically that's a huge step you should take. Um, just to get some exposure and that's definitely something you're going to want to keep a record of as far as where you went, the genetic counselor that you were working with, maybe some details about what the actual case was, whether it's prenatal, cancer, pediatric, like whatever it might be. That way you can kind of fill out your resume with some different experiences that you can list and refer to. So that's basically it. Um, just send an email whatever you want to say just something professional something simple and if they're if they said that they're open to student contact then they should absolutely be expecting emails from students and totally willing to help you because they 
are passionate about their work and they want to help the next generation make it happen for themselves and get those experiences and that exposure. So that's pretty much it for this video. When I get some more shadowing experience personally, I'm going to see if I can do some kind of interview process or some kind of documentation at the very least review what I got out of each experience so I can kind of share with you the different kinds of experiences there are in the different kinds of United counselors and the different areas they work in and their specialties and how they thought their process went to, to get to that point. So that's pretty much it for now, but I'll see you in the next one.